The following is a rebroadcast of Candlepin Stars and Strikes, featuring some of our most memorable recent programs. And be sure to join us in the fall for a brand new season of excitement on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Mike Morgan of Lynn Mass has won three matches in a row to start the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. After beating Paul Berger with a 4-12, Morgan roared back from 47 pins down to beat Scott Rondelli. And then last week, Morgan got off to a quick start with a 146, cruising in for win number three against Ed Arsenault. Today, Mike Morgan goes for four in a row against number two seed Bob Moran of Bill Ricca. It's the semifinal match of the 1989 Tournament of Champions. TV 50 Sports and the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association present Candlepin Stars and Strikes. From Park Place Lanes in Wyndham, it's the Tri-State Megabuts Tournament of Champions. I'm gonna split it, look at this. Yes! Oh, wow! <laughs> Right in the oh, pocket. My oh, there was never a doubt about that one. Good looking ball. Yes. And now your hosts for Cattlepin Stars and Strikes, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi again, everyone, and welcome to Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham, New Hampshire. This is week four of the 1989 Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. We're very glad you could be with us once again. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. It's semifinal time. Mike Morgan has won three in a row, and we're down to three bowlers left now. Well, standing in his way now, uh, Bob Moran. Uh, the disappointing trend for Mike, maybe. He started with a 412, down to 396, down to a 372 last week. I don't know. Well, he's still getting the wins, and that's all that's important up till now. We'll see if we can get four in a row. Let's meet the bowlers real quickly now. First of all, from Lynn, Massachusetts. If you've been watching the tournament, you know all about this guy. He's won three times in a row. That's Mike Morgan. And certainly has, and he's won always. He's had a very close match with Paul Berger, Scott Rondelli. He was way behind, came back, and last week had a pretty easy time with Ed Arsenal. Carries an average of 123, and he qualified for the show, of course, with a 397 three string total. And his opponent today will be our number two seed from Bill Rickham, Massachusetts, Bob Moran, who qualified for the Tournament of Champions with a 411, just one pin behind Pat Pay in the top spot. One of the first ones to qualify for the show, and he averaged also 123. And he has a high triple of 497. He qualified for the show, as you said, with a 411. We've recycled the bonus ball contest once again. We've had two winners in a row the last two weeks, so we're at $10. We'll also be going for that a little bit later on in the show. $400 to the runner-up of this match. The winner gets a chance at the 1500 next week against Pat Pay in our championship match. Three strings of bowling coming up between Mike Morgan and Bob Moran right after these words. So far, it's been the Mike Morgan story here on the Tournament of Champions. Brought to you by Tri-State Megabucks. He beat Paul Berger in the first match of this series, then Scott Rondelli, and then last week, Ed Arsenal with the uh, decreasing scores, but still getting the wins. And last week was a relatively easy one compared to the first two. Today, Bob Moran is the challenger, and Mike Morgan will get us started once again on lane 32. Mike, the number five seed coming into this Tournament of Champions, but here he is in the semifinal. We, uh, we wondered about the possibility of somebody perhaps going all the way in this series. It's very difficult with this competition. But uh, Mike has put three in a row together so far. Would be kind of ironic because we've only had one other bowler, am I correct? And that was the very first ladder that we had on Stars and Strikes. That Somebody came from the last spot. Coming back for the strike. And boy, have we get a crowd. Opening strike off the ball of Mike Morgan. You see it, five goes and then the two. Sooner or later, one of us is gonna say Mike Moran or Bob Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't have until you mentioned it. <laughs> right on it. Fair on strike in the first two for Mike Morgan. And now Bob Moran. And watch out. 
out, he'll leave a five pin. Spare it up in the first for Bob Moran. Bob from Billerica, Massachusetts. Both bowlers have a lot of supporters here. Yes. Bob's will be singing later, probably. Yes, we mentioned that last week. Get up, get up. Come on, back. Coming back. First One, seven, Phil. One, three, and eight pins left. Bob earned his way here back in November when he beat Pat Pay, Dave Cromie, and Dan Broder in consecutive weeks. Suda, yeah. Oh, yes. yes. Nice shot, and the bowlers are perfect so far. Strike spare for Mike Morgan, two spares for Bob Moran. You see the replay just nudging over that three pin. Oh, big boy. first ball for Mike Morgan. He leaves the solid 10 pin. Could have been three strikes in a row. Could have, should have, would have, <laughs> you know, all those. <laughs> all it means is a nine fill on the spare, and he's looking at the 10 pin to make it three in a row. No. Nope. Still there. Of the six bowlers who qualified for the Tournament of Champions, two had to win three matches to get here. Paul Berger did it, and Bob Moran did it. Ed Arsenal won two matches in his ladder championship to get here. Mike Morgan, Scott Rondelli, and Pat Pay each came in as the number one seed and were able to win that one match to get here. Four horsemen to the right, one, three, six, and ten, with some help in behind the one, three, and six. He's got a good shot if he's on the head pin. Oh. Everything but the 10. So the 10 pin early in the match has been a nemesis for Mike Morgan. Missed it for a spare, and that one looked like he hit it. 10 pin remained, 58 through four. Bob Moran to step up on a spare here in the second. Bob does a lot of his bowling at the Lita Lanes in Nashua and also at the Bowlaway Lanes in Burlington, Mass. Which Bob sounds like it's on the other side of the world, but it's <laughs> just down the pike a little ways. <laughs> oh, big oh. strike on spare, and Bob Moran is off to a big start. Brooklyn side crosses over, but he's nice and tight. Three quarters on that head pin trips the six and the seven pins for a strike on spare and three in a row. Bob works as a business line coordinator for Textron Defense Systems. He will take the lead in the match on this ball. He's working on a strike, remember. Actually may have given him a break that that three pin stayed up. He's going to shoot directly at that three pin. And Try to move the wood around for the seven, nine, and ten. Suda! Yes! Yes, uh, four in a row. The three pin definitely helped. It was the three pin that went over and got the seven. Four marks in a row for Bob Moran to start the match. Take a look from behind. Mike Morgan right into the pocket. You could see the flight of that ball all the way down. and He just buried it. He deserved better than the 5-7, but he does have a favorable piece of wood. I think he's got to be careful of his having the wood next to the 5 slide into the wood in front of the 7 and leave the 7 pin. Nope, no problem. Spare up in the 5th. Really, the bowlers have had shots on every single, there you see the replay, every single box. Could have been marks. Oh, 
Oh, big break there. Nine more, and again, it's the 10-pin. A 77 half for Mike Morgan, <laughs> and it won't be good enough. Well, he's got to be thinking about this. He just missed this spare, this pin for a spare back in the third frame. Not this time. Not at all. Right on top of it for that spare. And he needed those, the way Bob Moran is going. Strike on spare. And again, he's picking on that one two pocket. You see the ball spinning and finally starts to break a little bit. But solidly in the one two pocket, strike on spare. 77 through four, the strike up in the fifth. Let's see, it's he's right there again. This time, the five, seven, eight. Bob thought he had a better result well, coming than that. I thought so too because his <laughs> ball breaks from right to left. So you figure the the one three pocket really should be the pocket that he wants to hit. But he's got a makeable spare five eight in the seven pin. Looks good. Yes. Good off the wall. Ninety seven yeah. half for Bob Moran with a spare up in the sixth. I knew he would treble the eight. He'd probably want to catch a little more of that wood. It would have went a little quicker, but he still had a good shot at it. So he's perfect through six. Mike Morgan is on a spare. Mike's going to try to weather the storm right now. Try to keep pace. And he's got another spare opportunity. It'll be an eight drop, leaving the three six. What a string these two guys are having. Scary, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we have only three bowlers left in the Tournament of Champions. Oh, and boy. And Mike misses. These two and Pat Pay will split $2,500 in prize money among them, with $1,500 going to the overall winner. One oh five through seven. Bob Moran has one oh seven through six already. Oh, oh big baby. strike. Second one of the string for Mike Morgan. He had one in the first. Boy, scrambled him up there for a strike and it just was very close to strike on spare because that eight pin, he hit the three pin, which is the object pin, just a little too full. Otherwise he would have four in a row. Bob Moran is on a spare. He has six marks in a row to start the match. Yeah! yeah. Boy, I'll tell you what. Pocket. Wow. He's been getting them 20 at a time. Not that time, but a single pin for a mark. He's going to have a clear shot at the 10 pin for seven marks in a row. <laughs> Seven in a row. He couldn't have been any more accurate if he'd walked down there and tipped it over. Hammer this time. Hammer, come on. Seven in a row. 126. Let's see the ball, man. Let's see the ball. The lead is 21 plus this ball. He was a little full on the head pin, but the way he's throwing, it really doesn't matter at this point. He had a break when the 10 pin went down, and I didn't expect the four to fall into the two and get the strike. I think he was just as happy to see the 10 pin go down, so he have a shot at a two pinner for a spare, but never figuring the strike. Eight in a row. Mike, Mike Morgan this wants, is that, on a strike. Just wants that five pin to go. Oh, 
Well, he's got a choice now. I think he's probably going to elect to go to the wood next to the five pin. And he hasn't got much room to slide it across. No, he's going to the other side. Boy, Mike's got a chance at a 150 game. If he marks in the 10th, then he'll be trailing. <laughs> and he could be trailing by a whole bunch <laughs> the way Bob Moran is going. One thirty-two through nine. Ooh, right on top of it, and he punches out the one nine. It's enough to take the wind out of your sails a little bit. <laughs> wow. Oh boy. Well, he's going to try to grab as many as he can. Ah, oh, great out, great oh, out. 141 for Mike Morgan. Bob Moran now comes up. He has put up eight consecutive marks to start this opening game. And I'll tell you, if he were to throw another strike here, he would have a great shot at not only breaking our record single on the program, but also a shot at 200. 200. Yeah, really needs a double strike. Breaking first time he's off the head pin. One, three, six, ten, and a nine on the right with the seven pin alone in the corner on the left. For Gotta nine hurry. in a row. Gotta no, hurry. No, left it out to the right. One fifty two through eight. Bob's going to wait for that piece of wood to settle down. Interesting. Uh, what do you think, Doug? He's going to go for the head pin? Is he going to grab the two in the corner? Oh, I think he's got a string like this working. He's probably going to go for all of them. Certainly, he should have the confidence to feel that he can make it. Well, with a little dissension in the booth here, I say he's going for the 610. <laughs> we'll never know. We're both We're wrong. Not <laughs> <laughs> Great string. Great string of marks there through nine. That's through nine, 158. Gets a good round of applause for that string of marks. Now to the 10th. Right back on the head pin. Watch out. Watch out. It's still pushing it, <laughs> but the 10 pin will stay. Well, he's got a testy shot now because the way his ball breaks, he's got very little room to get by the front piece of wood. And he may be thinking on the left. The left piece of wood, those two pieces roll against the 10-pin and then rolled out. Or the wood in front of the 10-pin on the red line, maybe the ball will come off the sidewall. Couple choices. Let's see how it works. Nope. Came off the wall, but bounced up over the 7-pin, a 10-pin. Bob has thrown 160 games twice previously on our show. 167 against Bob Frank Coeur back in 1986, and then this season a 163 against Dan Broder in a championship match and he's got a 168 opener for his best performance ever on Stars and Strikes and he's got a 27 pin lead after one. Oh, that first string was pretty exciting. Let's well. see what we can come up with in the second game. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> Bob Moran is ready to go on the uh, second string. I think he is. There he goes. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of folks stopped by to wish him uh, well after that first game. Great string, 168. Mike Morgan threw a 141, but that kind of gets lost <laughs> in the great totals there in that first. Testy little spare here, two in the eight. Those are the two pins you remove when you get a half whister left. It's got a piece of wood resting against the eight pin, which could help. A couple other pieces to the right. And does. Use that wood for the spare. And it starts all over again, perhaps. You don't take much room. Oh, 
right in the pocket. Ooh. For a nine drop. And the five pin with a teasing piece of wood. <laughs> Here you see Bob's reaction. Get out of the way. I don't think that's done rolling yet. He'll shoot at the five pin. The question is, will he get a clean shot at it? And apparently he will. No, that couldn't be in a better spot for him because his ball breaks from right to left. If he breaks by it, he's going to clip the wood. Oh, he went too far right. Got a long wait. You know, I was just going to mention the same thing, Doug. Sometimes you know, good rhythm, everything. You don't want to wait for anything. <laughs> just want to keep firing. I think you know, maybe it broke his concentration just a little. And that's what I was saying. You can use the wood effectively there. And yeah, one mistake. Both balls have missed a single for, for Marks. Come on, Mike. Mike Morgan, who got a second chance this season to qualify for the Tournament of Champions. First time he was here, back in December, he zipped off three straight wins with consecutive 400 triples and then threw a fourth 400 but lost a ladder championship match to Pat Pay. And then in the very next series, he was back again as the number one seed and beat Bob Mazur to qualify for this tournament. Wow, this, uh, well, that caught me off guard, <laughs> that one. <laughs> I guess I don't describe anything there. Mike Morgan has never been that far off with the ball and in a month, disappointing six, the opening frame of the second game. Nothing wrong with that one. Oh, oh he pushed it all the way over. <laughs> it's got to be halfway into the channel. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that walked right across. And spare up. Let's take a look at that. Watch the seven pin. Look, it's still going. <laughs> but after you get one that close, the first thing they ask you is, did you make the putt? Yeah, that's right. And he made the putt. <laughs> Bob Moran again in the one-two pocket, this time leaving the five, six, ten. Seven pin lead for Bob Moran. I'm sure Bob has gotten word about this match between Scott Rondelli and. Nice oh, shot, great, great shot. shot. Let's take a look at that. Pinches the five pin, gets the 10, back for the six. I'm sure Bob has uh, got word about the match between Scott Rondelli and, and Mike Morgan, where Scott had a 47 pin lead after one. Mike was able to come back. In the pocket again, and that time, oh. wow, the wood slid through there the first time without hitting anything, and it came back, took out two of those pins. Two four left. Right there. He hasn't missed many. 11 marks already for Bob Moran. 11 out of 14. What happened to those other three boxes? <laughs> he is just incredible right now. Right in the pocket, Mike Morgan. Oh, he could use a strike, and he yes, gets it. Yes, sir, right back with a strike of his own. And the guy leading the cheers back on the bench was Bob Moran. That eight pin is going to go, believe me. <laughs> Mike Morgan looking for two strikes in a row. Skips yes, it right sir, in the pocket. Yes, he sir. Boy, he skipped that one up there. It's just enough to take the 
the spin off the ball a little bit, straightened it out. Otherwise, he might have gotten a half Worcester on the right. Who knows? We're going to take a little break, cool off a little once again, and come <laughs> back. Stars and Strikes continues. The Tournament of Champions. Don't go away. Bob Moran working on a spare in the fourth. He has the lead, but Mike Morgan has just thrown a double strike. These fellows are going at it like two prize fighters. Don't drop your guard. <laughs> the right hook is coming. We'll take a look at Bob work on lane 32. And really full for the first time today. Yeah. Absolutely right, Doug. Uh, right through the middle, spread eagle. And probably one of the, well, I think he missed the head pin one other time with the first ball. And that time is the only time he's gone full. Seventy half. A mere 70. Yeah, he's in a terrible slot. Yeah. <laughs> you just turned in, folks. Uh, at this point, last string, Bob Moran had 97. He's back right in the back pocket in again pocket. for another strike. Wow. Amazing. It's time to one three pocket. Just enough to tip this eight into the five for the strike. Mike Morgan working on two strikes in a row. Big, big ball for Mike Morgan. You're going to hear some noise if this is a strike. Got a shot at it. Yes! He's got it in a row! Oh, wow! Oh! Here it is again. It's just a matter of whether that four pin was going to go or not. And now we're right back in the same situation. This is a big ball for Mike Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> one, Mike. Oh, off target. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's well, that'll hurt him on the previous strike. That's how very important that first ball is on a double. Right back. That's what he wanted. And he has himself a 97 half. <laughs> and 107 through six. And believe it or not, through completed frames, it's dead even. But Bob Moram will break the tie with the fill on this strike. Wow. Mike is still talking to himself. You know, I, I think he'd rather punch out the one and the five. At yeah. least he'll know he's on the object pin on that. Uh, triple, which was a double because he had already filled the first strike. Right back. Bob was bidding for a double strike of his own. 5-7. Well, it's all a question of the wood now. and The piece that's frozen against the five is going in the wrong direction, but the other piece to the right may help. Well, his ball breaks back from right to left. I'm sure he's thinking about that piece of wood to the far right. I think that's his only shot. He's going to just below the red line. And that's going to send the ball toward the five pin, whether it clips the five pin on the way to the seven. No, well, let's see. No. Nope. He elected to go right at the five pin. Picks it for the 10. Another strike. Yeah. That could have just as easily been a triple two. He had threw a good ball when he left the 5-7. Here's a replay of the last strike in the eighth frame for Bob Moran. He's 
So box is completed. Mike Morgan is down by nine. And we'll have to check that piece of wood. Appears to have settled where it is, but he could inhibit the shot on the 2-5 for Mike Morgan, and that's gonna be cleared out of there. Dottie Lark's getting a pretty good workout here during yes, the Tournament sir. of Champions. All brought to you by Tri-State Megabucks. 2-5 left for Mike Morgan. Oh, oh yeah, oh, oh, all the way. Oh. <laughs> Well, you got to be able to read the greens. <laughs> and back it comes. I uh, didn't really see that break on that. <laughs> Keep the ball in play. You never know what's going to happen. Just missed the head pin. It's an eight drop, though. I guess we can put an asterisk next to those eight pins. Uh, who will remember those? <laughs> one and two left for Mike Morgan. That leaves him trailing by one in the match. Light to oh, the off the wall for two in a row. That is the 11th mark for Mike Morgan. Bob Moran has 13 already. And he steps up working on a strike in the eighth. You're going to see two incredible two-string totals after this one is over. Both bowlers could be over 300 for two. Oh, wow. <laughs> the goal post, 7-10. Looked like a pretty good ball, but nothing came close to touching either one of those pins. Well, it's, yeah, it's shaping up a little better by the minute. Well, that little V. We've got a shot at it now. Should be aiming for that little V where the two pieces of wood come together. I think you're right. Uh, I think he would just like them to be frozen together. Mm -hmm. But I think that's just like he was shooting at the five pin. Going down a little further. Nope. Yep. And I think being down that low might have sent the... Second piece of wood in front of the 10. Good bid by Bob Moran. And make it a nine, 127 through nine. Bob Moran and his wife Carol live in Bill Ricca, Massachusetts. They have seven children and right off the top of my head, I believe it's Jeff, Rob, <laughs> Dave, Mike, Russ, Ed, and Rich. Good, uh, good. Amazing. Two, four, six. Could I read those two? Or? <laughs> 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 Trying to pinch the two pin over into the six. Got a good shot at it. Yes, oh, sir. Nice shot. Probably would have had it without the wood. Great shot. Here's the replay. Pinch that two pin and right into the six. 137 and a ball to come. He's at 305 plus this ball. That's two games, folks, if you just turned in. <laughs> Stick around, we got another game to go. Oh. Oh, my. <laughs> Thought for sure it would be 315, but he'll have to settle for 314. A 146. 314 for two. We'll see if that's enough to hold the lead because Mike Morgan is working on a honey of a string as Bob Moran had in the first. Slid by the head pin, takes a couple of extras though. One, three, seven. That was on a spare. It's already at 142. No. Ten box, one fifty two. Needs a mark. Yeah. 
actually needs to take the lead. He'd have to throw a double. Oh, my. And a spread eagle. Well, he's going to find himself down, but uh, it's going to be within 15 pins anyways, 10 or 15 pins, depending on what he gets this final frame. Well, Bob Moran threw that big spare nine in the 10th, and that'll be the difference heading into the third and final game. But what bowling we have seen so far. That's a 160 and a 301 for Mike Morgan. Through two, 314 for Bob Moran, 301 for Mike Morgan. We've got another string to roll. <laughs> we'll be back, don't go away. Of course, we have uh, this week and then next week our Tournament of Champions final match, and then we'll be taking a break for the summer as the crew attends bowling camp. That's right. they got to really sharpen up their skills. Seven box for Mike Morgan. He trails by 13 in the match coming into this third and final game. I hope Dottie Larrick has a lot of new markers over there near the scoreboard because <laughs> the way these guys have been coloring in those marks. Back on the head pin, triangle right, three, five, six. I have a clear shot at that triangle. We would expect nothing less <laughs> the way these bowlers are bowling. Spare up in the second for Mike Morgan. Neither bowler has gone more than two boxes in a row without marking. Six hundred and fifteen pins, total pins by both bowlers in two games. Wow. Well, this will be interesting. The two, seven, and ten with lots of wood on the deck. What do you think Pat Pay is thinking about right now? <laughs> Probably saying, get it out of your systems now, fellas. <laughs> the seven pin stays. Pat Pay will face the survivor of this match <laughs> next week. Wants that 10 pin to go, it's not going to happen. Two, four, and eight with the 10 pin in the right hand corner. Nope, this well, time it's the 10 pin. Bounced it in front of the 10 pin, went in front, came back across in front a second time before it cleared the eight pin out of there, but didn't, didn't touch the 10. So Mike Morgan has a chance to cut into the lead. <laughs> 16 pins is the lead minus this ball. Right there for yes. 10. Yes! Strike on spare. Just a question of if it was going to fall the right way. Certainly a good enough ball for a strike. That is Mike's sixth strike in the match. He had three in a row in game two. The times you've seen it, both bowlers, when he, they push each other, they both bowl even better. Ooh. Well, that won't cost Mike as much as the last time he did that because it was on a double strike, on a triple strike, actually. This time, he can still recover with the second ball. I'm 
sure he's disappointed with the six fill, but six more pins. Bob Moran up for his third and fourth frames. And look out. Well, if the five pin had fallen backwards, which it looked like it was going to, it would have been a strike. Five and nine. Piece of wood all over the place. Watch out. Up too, too high. Spear up in the third. Leading by nine. And you could increase that lead if he's anything better than six. slid that one off to the right. He was fortunate to avoid a half Worcester. Well, so and he gets six. But more importantly, he's got a shot at a spare. One, two, seven, ten. Piece of wood that's angled, so it looks like it will carry the ten. Well, yes. Wasn't quite the piece I thought was going to take the ten, but it happened. Spare up in the fourth. We'll pause and we will come back for the final six boxes of this terrific Stars and Strikes semifinal match in the Tournament of Champions after these messages. It's a sprint to the finish now. Bob Moran leads by eight pins, but he also has a spare up in the fourth, so he'll increase that, that lead when he gets up. Mike Morgan for his fifth and sixth frames. Oh, off the yeah, strike. Oh. Just keep those pins in play, and you never know what's going to happen. Once the seven pin to go, it does. The six goes, and finally the three. He kind of gave himself a stern talking to after that one, saying, throw the ball out there like that all the time. And there it is, and everything Ooh. but the six. Oh, may take it. Let's see. No, nope. oh. the two pieces of wood collided, and that slowed it down. Well, he's got a testy shot at the six pin. Doesn't have a clear shot at it, so he's... He, if he comes up high, he's got a shot at, the, at, at making it. If he doesn't come high, he better go way low so it comes off the wall. So. Either way, tough shot. I'm sure he's going to try to cap the wood. No, nope, oh. wasn't quite enough. Gave it a good bid, though. Nine, Phil. 70. We'll take another look at that spare chance from Mike Morgan. This is how much he missed it by. He has to cap that wood just barely off the cap. And around the six pin it goes. Bob Moran working on a spare in the fourth. And will he trip the two, uh, three pin? Almost, back door. Takes a nine drop. Increases his lead temporarily to 17. Needs this to keep pace with a strike that Mike has up in the fifth. He's got it. Boy, it's a shame that one of these guys is going to have to uh, take a check and go home after this, but <laughs> 17 pins and he needs to drop at least nine to maintain that lead. Looks good. There's your nine. <laughs> and he's 
not going to get any help from the wood, I don't believe. He's going to have to shoot right at the 10 pin. Well, that's a big mark right there for Bob Moran. That will put the lead probably over 20 heading into the final four boxes. And of course, Mike Moran is at the disadvantage here trailing. Mike Morgan, rather, is at the disadvantage here trailing of uh, going first. See, I knew it. <laughs> yeah, he's going to have to have three, at least three big marks coming out. Coming back yes. for the strike. There's one. Whoa, mercy. <laughs> I think he would have been satisfied with the eight pin drop at first, but you know, there's always the possibility of throwing the double. That is eight strikes today for Mike Morgan. The record on Stars and Strikes by one bowler in a match is nine. Paul Berger did that just a few weeks back. Oh, he almost got it right there. Carbon copy of the last time he was on that lane. Remember, he had the bad piece of wood in front of the six pin. This time, he's got a clear shot at it. Will be a spare on strike. And he's right got it. there. Oh. This is a long ways from over. Wow, what a match. What a match. Well, Bob Moran can increase his lead here in the sixth, but he's still facing a strike spare by Mike Morgan. Both bowlers oh, are wow. both bowlers are already over 400, and that piece of wood that came off that side wall went right between the one and the two. Certainly did, and did knock anything down. Now be careful with this wood because if it comes up in between the one and the two, it could cost him. But it's far enough away. If anything, it should help with a four-seven. Trying to split the one-two. A little too full. Oh. So very quickly, 10 pins of his lead is going to disappear here in the seventh. So it's right where it was going into this third game, a 13-pin lead through the seventh for Bob Moran, and he's opposite a spare here. Wow. My palms are sweating just <laughs> watching him. <laughs> Right back on the head pin, little full. Let's see what happens. Okay. Tough choices here. To me, it would be no choice. I'd go after the 610. Looking it over. Well, you might wouldn't think about playing that the left side of that I, wooden front. I don't. I wouldn't. But you know, there's. My way, Bob's way, and the right way sometimes. <laughs> well, there you go. Gave it a good bid. He must have figured that if to hit it right to carry the 7 8, he probably would have left one of the, well, probably the 10 pin. Easy. We don't miss too many shots back here. That's right. But more important, he's got a pin now. He'll take nine. So, as Mike Morgan comes up for the final two, he trails by 12, less whatever he puts on this spare. And then he's got to put something up there in those final two. Right, you would think that he would at least need one more mark to make Bob Moran mark in his final two. But more important right now is this ball. Off target, a five. Now he definitely needs another mark. Trails by seven in the match. And off target. Now he's got a big choice here. Do you grab the four seven, or do you go for the head pin and try to get three or four? Bold bid right there. Got three. Three out of the four. But he really needs a mark here in the 10th. Absolutely. Absolutely. Seven pin lead uh, for Bob Moran. Bob Moran could just pin out if Mike doesn't get a mark. Of course, a mark eight forces Bob Moran to get a mark. Off target. Half no, Worcester. Half Worcester.
really needs this. We've seen it made oh, many times, but no. not this time. No. Well, this could really be a shame for Mike Morgan. He has thrown up in the 430s, and it apparently will not be good enough. And Mike seems to be having a problem with his shooting hand. Well, he's, you don't like to say anything to take away from a guy's effort. He's bowled great, and he makes no excuses for himself. But um, I had the same problem many, many times. And, what happens a lot of times, I think you're gripping that ball and you're so intense that you're putting pressure on that thumb all the time. And all of a sudden, the muscles that control the thumb start to cramp up on you. And it's uh, pretty tough trying to release the ball when the thumb doesn't want to let it go. Now Mike obviously in some pain. Yep. And he courageously fills it out with a 10 and a 134, a 435 for Mike Morgan. And it's not going to be enough. No, it won't Incredible be. match. As long as Bob Moran keeps it on the lane, all he needs is 13 pins in the must, two boxes to must win. Must be near a record as far as total pinfall goes. Actually, I was looking that, looking that up, and the record is 872. So Bob Moran would need a 138, a 139, in order to break that. So he'd have to mark twice. And there's, there's one. one. <laughs> Just order it up, Doug. That's <laughs> all. <laughs> Actually, he needs three marks in order to get 30, of course. There's the one-two pocket, which uh, ironically has been the better pocket of the one-two and one-three for him in this whole match. So uh, Bob Moran will move on against Pat Pay in the finals next week. But boy, uh, you people are just walking in, turning on your your set now. You missed a great one. 4:35 for Mike Morgan, and he's not going to be enough. Bob's got a shot at this. If he sweeps it, it doesn't happen. He is at 447 right now. <laughs> 448 for Bob Moran. What an incredible match between these two bowlers. Bob Moran moves on to face Pat Pay in the Tournament of Champions final. We'll be back with the bonus ball contest and to speak with the bowlers in a minute. What a match we just saw. The combined total for the two bowlers today, 883. That is an all-time record here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. The guy who comes up short, Mike Morgan. With a 435, but not quite good enough this time. I know I know you were feeling that in your in that thumb a little bit at the end, but still yeah, great ball. I mean, the key ball was the ball of the ninth on the mark, and I didn't have a cramp then, and I didn't hit the head pin and take advantage. The tenth box, I couldn't even hold the ball. I knew I needed a mark, and I dropped it. But I mean, the, I threw two strike nine to upset. I needed one of the doubles, and I had the bad wood. But Bobby just never gave me an open. Never gave me an opening. No shame at all in a 4.35. Oh, oh, I mean, give Bobby all the credit. I mean, he didn't give me. I, I was mocking. And he just kept mocking back at me. I mean, four hundred dollars for you, Mike, and uh, and our thanks and congratulations. We also have a plaque for you. We hope to see you next year. All right, take it all easy. Right. That's Mike Morgan from Lynn. Terrific job. And now we'll go over to lane 31. Bob Moran for the bonus ball contest. We're looking for our third consecutive winner. So let's see what happens here. Ten dollars in the jackpot. This will probably be a strike. No, wouldn't you know? Oh, wait a minute now. <laughs> Eight is the drop, and ten is the guess for James Maloney of Fitchburg. So James will be receiving a TV50 NHCBA desk pen as a consolation prize and. 448, that's all you can do, huh? That's, that's all I can do. Come on right in here, Bob, so we can get you on camera. That's, that was a terrific match. Thank you. Mikey made me do it. Boy, he's a, he's a good kid and a good bowler. Real good bowler. He, uh, he kept it on me all day. Well, do you have anything left for uh, Pat Pay next week? Well, we, we sure hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't come up here just to, to bowl one. All right, well, we're going to have you back another time next week for the big money, 1500 to the winner. Thanks a lot, Bob. We'll see you then. Thank you, Doug. All right. Thank you. Bob Moran, the big winner, and uh, an incredible 448 triple. That sets it up. Our championship match in the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions comes next Sunday here on TV50. It'll be Bob Moran against Pat Pay, $1,500 to the winner. We hope you'll be here. It should be terrific. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole TV50 sports crew, Doug Brown, bye-bye, everybody, from Park Place Lanes.